What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Janet, the ex-Disney artist turned independent creator teaching you how to actually make money on YouTube. In this video, I'm going to be sharing how much I made on YouTube in the month of April with 6,500 subscribers. I will also be sharing with you guys how much I made with my merch sales and show you guys how I did it. Let's get started. So without further ado, this is how much money YouTube paid me in the month of April. Yes, I made $79, but wait, there's more. I also made $2,610.31 in Shopify. In total, I made $2,689.31. It's my first four-figure month and I've tripled my income since February. Not to mention, I did all of this during quarantine. And for those of you who don't know, I live cheaply, so my cost of living is only about $2,000. I'm proud to say I reached my cost of living goal within three months of running my online business. Now for the fun part. I'll go into my analytics and I'll show you how it happened. In the month of April, I got 22.1k views and 1.3k hours of watch time. It's a little less than the amount of views I got in March, but it mostly stayed the same. Even though I got a similar amount of views, my YouTube income has dropped a little bit because YouTube AdSense has dropped a little bit. The main reason is because the CPM for a variety of videos have dropped this month during quarantine. I posted nine videos in the month of April. Three business related videos, two art videos, one social media topic podcast, one art topic podcast, one psychology topic podcast, and one business topic podcast. Part of the reason why I'm posting such a variety of content on my channel is because I'm testing out how much each niche gets. There are topics that I'm interested in posting videos about, but I'm also testing the waters to see if any of them are more lucrative than others. This channel is pretty new, so I want to experiment, test, and learn as much as possible before it gets a little bit more difficult. Once a channel gets bigger and an audience starts to have more expectations, it becomes a little bit harder to do so. That's one advantage that smaller channels have over bigger, more established ones. I also think it's pretty neat that you guys get to see me be the guinea pig and come along with me as I test all these things out. My top performing videos in terms of views were my viral why I quit my job at Disney video. Second was the how much YouTube paid me with 6,000 subscribers video. And third was the first episode of the Honey and Absinthe podcast. Notably, in my top 10 videos, most of the videos that did well were the videos I posted in April. It's a pretty good sign that my videos are continuing to perform better and better as each month goes by. Randomly, the How to Get Monetized Fast on YouTube video was also in my top 10 performing videos, even though it was posted back in February. You never know when a video is going to randomly get a bunch of views, and this this is an example of a piece of evergreen content that suddenly got a bunch of engagement. If you go into the reach tab of this video to find out where all these new views are coming from, you'll see that most of them are coming from search. It means the title and search optimization of this video is working in my favor, bringing me to the front page of search and then bringing in a good amount of views. That is why it is so important to think about how to title your videos properly in a way where people actually search for content. On posting days, I actually spend about an hour titling and then retitling my videos in order to get the best result. If you've been on my channel before and you've watched a few of these kinds of videos, you'll know that my top viewed videos are not necessarily my top earning videos. So here are my top earning videos. You'll notice that the top earning video is actually the how much YouTube paid me in March video. Even though it got 2.9k views, half as many as the why I quit my job at Disney video. It made practically double the amount of money with far less views simply because its CPM is quadruple the amount of the Why I Quit My Job at Disney video. The monetized playbacks for that video are also extremely high at 2.1k views. Almost everyone who watched that video watched it with ad block off, allowing me to make maximum profit. Other notable videos include the How I Make Money as an Artist video, How to Start a Successful YouTube Channel video, and the How Much I Made on YouTube in February video, all having over $30 CPM. They made me between $3 to $5. Not bad, considering that they only got 150 to 300 new 
monetized views. And these videos were all posted back in March. I wasn't expecting my older videos to be in my top 10 earning videos. It gives me hope that as I develop a bigger library of content and continue to post consistently, all of my content will stack on top of each other, making me more and more money each month and helping me to get you to like the video because it helps the algorithm. Now let's get into the videos I posted in the month of April. Remember how I mentioned in my March income report video that my CPM for April has dipped? For those of you who don't know, CPM is not a fixed rate. It goes up and down depending on how much advertisers choose to spend on ads. I suspect that during quarantine, advertisers are spending a lot less. Therefore, CPM rates drop. I posted two art videos in the month of April. Usually, the CPM for art niche videos, at least for me, is about $6. It's now dropped to $3. For my very first custom shoe video, the CPM was $6. I initially thought that this video would be categorized as an art niche video, but it was actually categorized as a fashion niche video. Therefore, it got higher CPM. But from what I've seen from fashion CPM from other YouTubers is that it usually is around $10. I suspect the CPM has been slashed in half due to quarantine. For my viral why quit my job at Disney video, the CPM went from $6 in March to $5 in April. Not a huge drop, but a drop nonetheless. Business niche CPMs have also dropped drastically. Usually the CPM for these types of videos are between $15 to $25 or more. They fall into about $8 to $12. The psychology niche was at $6 CPM, and the social media niche was around $10. For the psychology and social media niche, I can't say for sure since I don't have previous videos to compare it to, but I do believe that the CPM has been lowered, judging by what other people have said about their CPMs prior to quarantine. The only niche that I've noticed have an increase in CPM instead of a decrease is actually the finance niche. Since money is on every everyone's minds right now, those advertisers are spending more than ever. But I'm expecting that CPM to lower or average out over time since quarantine is only temporary. All of this is exactly why I've structured my business model to not rely completely on YouTube AdSense. And it's the reason why I've diversified the content of my channel. If I were making only art niche type videos, I would have gone to making practically nothing before quarantine to basically zero. Fortunately, I do make a variety of content so that I can continue making a little bit of passive income from YouTube. Also, since I use YouTube as a way to increase my reach and to sell my products and services online, my overall income increased this month even as CPMs decrease. Anyone who is planning on joining YouTube in order to make money needs to run their channel like a business, not like just another social media platform. Or to expect YouTube to be their only source of income. If I started YouTube with the expectation that I would be making a living off of only YouTube AdSense, it would have taken me a really long time to be able to make this kind of money. I was lucky to plan this far ahead. But as more businesses transition to online, especially during this time, it's incredibly important to help support them in ways outside of just watching their free content, especially the art creators. If you didn't think they made much before because of low CPM, it's even worse now during quarantine. Like I said before, if they can't make a living doing this, the free content that you love so much might not exist one day. Just like how any other retail business can go out of business. I've already seen a decrease in videos being posted by my fellow content creators. So how did I manage to make so much money in the month of April? Especially since if you've watched my March income report video, my views didn't increase drastically, nor did my subscribers. How is it that I can have the same amount of views as March and a similar amount of subscribers, but go from making $499 in March to $2,600 in April? My answer is consistency. Anyone who's ever tried to market or sell anything should understand this concept. There's this common common rule in e-commerce where it takes a visitor about six visits, give or take, to your website before any kind of conversion happens. This is called the conversion rate. One tactic to increase your conversion rate is to continuously put yourself in front of your potential supporters or customers through marketing or social media posts. If you don't have a lot of money for marketing, your best bet is to post a lot on social media. Once you've got the sale and you've done a good job with your service or your product is excellent, you've earned the trust of a loyal customer 
who will most likely buy from you again, and this time increase the amount bought. I actually learned this from my six years of in-person conventioning experience. What I've learned in the past three months as I transition to online sales is that it's exactly the same logic. I started posting consistently on YouTube in the month of February, and I posted two new videos every single week. I also started posting three times a day on TikTok and Instagram in the month of March. That meant the amount of visitors to my website went from 2,400 in March to 4,700 in April. In order to increase my income, I knew I had to increase the amount of traffic to my store, therefore increasing how many sales I'd be getting. And my theory came true. So the number one advice that I have for creators who are trying to achieve a similar thing to what I'm doing is to be consistent. Develop good habits of consistently producing good content, and in turn, you will increase your reach and help your audience develop the habit of supporting you. By the way, that's actually an essential marketing technique that I learned from listening to The Power of Habit on Audible. Check out audibletrial.com slash the honey and absinthe podcast to get a free trial if you want to listen to it. If you haven't noticed already, this video is shot on a better camera. Thank you everyone who has bought something from my store and continues to support what I do. Since my business is so new, I'm not taking a single cent from the business. I am putting everything I earn straight back into the business so I can improve and give you guys better content. So if you like what I do, like this video and consider buying my merch. Subscribe to my channel for a new podcast every Monday and a new video every Thursday, especially if you want more income report videos every month. You will see how my income shifts from month to month, how subscribers affect my income, and how much my business makes at every single step of growth. Come join me on my journey and don't forget to dare to dream.